everybody. Welcome to the IROC Nets podcast. I'm Corey Eichelberger and I will be your host through this next 45 minutes to an hour of crazy. That's what you've come to know and love from this podcast. A little bit of learning, a whole lot of crazy, right? Um, I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday season. For me, it was a little bit too busy, uh, a little bit stressful, maybe a few too many parties, um, gatherings and get togethers. I had a little bout of illness right after the holiday, but I want to thank everyone for their well wishes for my mother who actually hosted Christmas this year, sat in her recliner and watched all of the grandchildren unwrap their gifts. Um, we didn't do too much else, but everyone went to her house. Um, we brought in food so that they didn't have to cook and it really turned out to be nice. She's doing much better. Um, she has her six week checkup here coming up in January, so she'll be up. Actually, maybe I'll try to have her on the podcast. We'll see about that. Um, but I want to thank everyone for just wishing her well. <clears throat> it's hard to be um, ill and then have a surgery that you hope will fix everything and then you're worse for a while. Um, that always makes it so disheartening. And so she hasn't even been able to start physical therapy yet. But anyway, I just want to um, tell everyone thank you for that. I would like to say hi to a few friends today. Um, Carlin, Melanie, I want to say hi to you. Melanie knit so many charity gifts this year that she gave away. It was it was crazy. 500 objects that plus that went to charity. I mean, I think all of us are so fortunate and so lucky to be able to um, knit and crochet and weave and spin um, and do something that we're passionate about, but then to turn around and give back is just really touching. So congratulations, Melanie, on your, I mean, I know it's not really an award or honor, but I'm honoring you today. Uh, I want to say hi to Amber and Matt and Renee and Jenny and Stacy, um, and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all of you too. Um, let's say hi to uh, the Knitters League ladies, right? Um, Sophia and Julia and Elisa and who went, Lori. Um, I watch you guys whenever you put a podcast up and you may always make me laugh and I really think you're doing a, a nice job of um, podcasting with four people because I find it hard to sit down with one person and podcast and get the job done. So I can't imagine trying to, you know, anybody like um, the grocery girls, Jody and Tracy with two people having to get together, um, anybody that podcasts is uh, the Naughty Nitwits. Um, yeah. Uh, hi to you guys too. I just watched your um, most recent podcast the other day, the one about the cow. Can't remember what you called it, but it was funny. Um, yeah, so I it's I just can't imagine what it's like to sit down with groups of people and try to organize that. Um, I've been watching the Stockin' at Zombies for years, and I know Megan and Amy often struggle with their you know growing families to get people together and um, get themselves together to sit on the couch and and podcast, and they often do it really late at night which just is amazing that they get up then the next morning and function <laughs> with their small children. So, and then I want to say hi to Amy Beth. I've been watching Amy Beth's um, podcast since episode one, and I always talk about her when I teach my sweater and shawl workshops because I have a couple of stories that, um, that she reiterates, and so I often um, mention her most recent podcast is um, touching, thought-provoking, interesting, eye-opening. I, I can't say enough. You just need to go out and watch Amy Beth, the fat squirrel, her new podcast. It, um, if you have issues or don't have issues with, um, body love, um, body positivity, um, not making sweaters or knitting sweaters because you're waiting until you're a size smaller. Um, just go listen to some of the thoughts she has on that. It's really, really interesting and eye-opening. I was just really blown away. I watched it yesterday and I'm still thinking about it today. Don't you love that? You read a book and you think about it all week and you're, you just, you're, the, the thoughts that it puts into your mind so you process over time. I just think that's so wonderful. So hi to all you folks out there. Um, today, let's do the giveaways first, right? I've got a jewel closure to give away. Um, from the last podcast and I drew and the winner is number 11 I'm gonna say Kaija knits too and that's Karina in Pennsylvania 
So just get in touch with me and I will put that in the mail to you this week or next whenever you get around to watching this. It might be a crazy week for people getting back into you know, the new year and work and stuff like that. And then I have a chimney bag to give away, one of Ann Brody's darling chimney bags for the Chim Chimney Hat Knit Along. Um, this one is going out to Cookie Lady Knits, Heidi in Virginia. I used to live in Virginia. Number two. So you two both get in touch with me and we will get, um, get that stuff out in the mail to you. I have a giveaway this week. This is an interesting one. I purchased this needle case a year or two ago and came across it when I was cleaning out some cupboards the other day. And it just never worked for me. But I thought someone would probably really like to have it. It's really a nice case. I just have too many needles that I want with me. And this, this holds a ton. So that just sounds weird. But so anyway, <clears throat> you have all these, this whole section here. And then you have places for cords here. Oh, there's some needles in there. Look at that. I left needles in there. So there's a pocket here, and then there's a clear pocket here, and then there's a space for more needles here. So I did try to use it for a period of time, but it just, it was either too bulky or I, I couldn't get everything I needed in it. I found it in a drawer, so obviously I don't need it. And I just thought, gosh, it's in really good shape. There's like no wear on it. I don't think I carried it for very long. So if you're interested in this, then you can just go out to the threads on the Ravelry group and put your name in and I'll send it off to someone because it just seems like someone should be using it. So that's the red, the red needle case. Remember, show notes are available after every episode. I put them in the down bar of YouTube as well as on the Ravelry boards and I put them on my website. So if there's something that you're looking for, like you can't remember the name of the shawl or the sweater um, or what's what knit alongs going on or what giveaway I have going on it's always in the show notes and I post those immediately following um, the uploading of the podcast each week so you can check those out also remember there's a questions thread in the Ravelry group so if you have something that you would like me to expound on or give my opinion on you can go over there and ask a question at any time if you just want me to answer it privately or to you just let me know and I'll do that that's not a problem Right now, the 12 Days of Knitting Mystery Knit Along is going on, and we um, just are uploading day seven tonight. We had no internet earlier at our house, so I was really concerned about whether or not I was going to be able to edit this or upload it, so it might be late. Um, it'll, I'll still get it up on Tuesday. But um, the we found an error in Clue 6 chart. It's two um, stitches. Uh, the symbols are transposed on the chart. The written instructions are correct. Thank you to Penny for pointing it out to us. We had um, corrected that in a chart previously and it got through somehow. So really disappointing <laughs> when you're trying to be very um, accurate in your descriptions and your clues and your charts. Uh, so the chart is up on the Ravelry page right now and I'll be doing an update to Clue 6 as soon as we can get the PDF <clears throat> from the graphic designer. But otherwise, the 12 Days of Knitting Mystery Cal is going on and you're welcome to join us at any time. I have several people who are just starting late. They had a busy holiday and they didn't get started on time. There's really no reason that you can't knit for 12 days and have it be your 12 days, whatever those may be. If that's um, every other day, that's 12 Saturdays, that works fine. You can join into that um, knit along at any time. Um, there are spoiler threads out at the, in the Ravelry boards as well as um, an actual end of project spoiler thread. So you can see exactly what it looks like in a couple of different iterations and colorways. Uh, people are posting um, their finished object clues each day in the threads and um, sharing those a little bit. But we're having a, a really nice time and I think people are enjoying the sampler stitches that they're learning and it's nothing too strenuous. Um, there are no weird 
abbreviations or things that you've never done before that are difficult to execute. Um, I just wanted it to be really approachable for everybody and so um, you're welcome to take 12 mini skeins or two fingering weight skeins of yarn and make six clues out of one and six clues out of the other. However you want to do it, you can certainly join in on that at any time. Just remember you can find me at Corey at irockknits.com for email. Uh, you can find me at irockknits.com for my website. You can find me at irockknits on Ravelry and Instagram. And I also has, have a Facebook group for irockknits. I have a sweater to talk about today. I have some storage ideas to talk about today. I'm gonna to start talking about a shawl. I have a shawl class workshop. I do 60 shades of shawls, just like I do 60 shades of sweaters. And I thought <clears throat> I was gonna do all the sweaters first and then do the shawls. And I thought, why don't I just do one and one? So we're gonna talk about a sweater today and a shawl project and um, see how that goes. See if people are interested in, in hearing my take on shawls. I did some knitting for the holidays and I brought some pictures to show, um, to do show and tell because I gave uh, sweaters to two um, nieces and a nephew at Christmas and so I don't have them anymore but this is my beautiful niece Callie and I knit the flax sweater in Madeline Tosh and I knit her a cowl, a fuzzy cowl and a hat and she does not like sweaters because they're too hot so oh gosh how many years ago I knit her the snowflake sweater and her mom said, I love it. She will wear it, but she will wear it more if you take the sleeves off of it. So I ripped back and made it short sleeves. And you know what? That's a lot easier, a whole lot faster. This was the chunky Malabrigo and it was that speckled, really cute colorway. So she looked darling. This is my tiniest niece. She's three. It's kind of a dark picture, but that's her snowflake sweater, which I showed on the podcast. Um, we used it as a sample and um, at a, a one of the local yarn stores and then it was her size so I just gifted it because why keep it in my stuff um, but she put it on right away no prompting by anybody just put it on stood there took a picture took it right back off went on to the next present it was really cute and then this is my nephew and this is his flax sweater and I did not block it because last year his sweater fit perfectly and this year I didn't know how much he'd grown so his mom has to um, wrap this one up in a wet towel and, and let it it looks a little tight across the shoulders to me and so I told her that and she says yep no problem I will take care of that so I because I told her I would do it if she wanted me to so those were um, oh I have one more I'm gonna go get it you know when you think you have absolutely everything ready <laughs> and then you don't <laughs> so that's where I'm at and this is the goat herder sweater. There's the bottom. Dream in color everlasting in the bitter colorway. Just super classy, straightforward men's sweater. Although I totally would wear this. I, I like a good pullover. Um, so I would absolutely put that on. So I'm hoping that my husband wears it tonight. I'm recording on, um, New Year's Eve night, a late day, and we're going out for dinner and a movie after this, and so I'm hoping that when he comes home, he'll put this on because it just came up off the floor not too long, <laughs> just the other, last night, from blocking and being wet on the dining room floor. And I'm gonna have to work on that because I got my husband a Roomba for Christmas because he's a neat Nick, and um, we can't run the room when I block things on the dining room floor which is my perfect place to do it because we've got a kind of a flat pattern fat, um, carpet in here. And uh, so I have to take everything up in order to do that. I have a few acquisitions from over the holidays and I'm just gonna show them quickly. I do not want this podcast to turn into a look what I bought um, podcast, but boy did I get some pretty stuff and so I wanted to share it. I had never heard of this dyer and I had watched her um, web page for quite a while. This is old rusted chair hand dyed yarns. She is out of Nashville, Tennessee, and I got a sweaters quantity of this squish DK in the spiced colorway. It is looking maybe red on the screen, but it's rust. Just deep saturated rust. Absolutely love it. And then my Fiber Friend shawl is going to be live um, this week, 
Uh, I just was talking to the Carolina, Carolina Fiber Fest people uh, briefly about, uh, let me grab it, it's right here. Uh, I was just talking briefly with the uh, emailing with the Fiber Fest people to see how they wanted to kind of launch the pattern because it's all done and ready to go. So look to that for that to be up in the next day or so. But remember, this is the one out of Suburban Stitcher DK. That's kind of a long crescent with some patterning stitches. So it's a little bit of a sampler. They wanted a really easy knit. They wanted something that all ability levels could knit. And I've talked about that. So because I want to knit another one, I knit this one in purple because this is the pattern that I dedicated to my friend Mary Brown who I've been knitting with for 12 or 13 years and her favorite color was um, purple. So I chose the faded lavender color, but I want to knit now one up in Cory colors. So I ordered a bunch of skeins of DK because I just think it's lovely. So this is her curry colorway. This is her obligatory PSL pumpkin spice latte which I think is what I'm gonna do it in this is a really dark saturated one called play day which I really think I think I'm like I'm leaning toward this because it's winter so I don't know and then I got a really <laughs> oh this is just this is tandoori it totally speaks to my soul raspberry and orange at the same time right <laughs> So I may do it in that. It's pretty variegated, so once I wind it up, I'll know a little better if that's what I'm gonna do it in. So I got a bunch of skeins of DK, but you can look for that fiber fence shawl to happen um, on Ravelry any day. And then the knit along for the Carolina Fiber Fest is January, February, and March. But I will also be running a knit along in my Ravelry group starting tomorrow, um, which will run for two months every two months, all year round for anything you knit that is I Rock Knits Designs. Um, I know a lot of podcasters do that. They um, have people knit their designs and a lot of people are doing their top nine picks for 2019 right now. So you choose nine things that you think you wanna knit and then you post it on Instagram. And it's just kind of a little um, contract with yourself, you know, or this is what I'm interested in. Something to motivate you to maybe cast on all the things or pick something. Here's my thought for you. Why not pick at least one designer who doesn't have a lot of projects on her pattern page? You know, as a new designer, I, I talked to Amber about this quite a bit. <laughs> when I so Amber did a, a knit along a year ago, maybe, where you had to pick something where uh, there were less than 30 projects for that pattern. And I would challenge you to find somebody who's got less than 10 projects out there. If you're looking for a hat pattern, maybe it's just as easy to pick one that's cabled for, from a designer that has less than 10 than from a designer who has 2,000 that are already knit up out there. And it's not that those people don't deserve, you know, your money too. I just think maybe we should, as a community, try to uplift and, and support designers who aren't maybe making a living doing this, but um, just are doing it for the love of it. And, Honestly, every time I get one of those little emails in my <laughs> inbox, it tells me who part purchased the pattern. And I sit at my computer and I say, thank you, Mary Jane. <laughs> thank you, Marla. <laughs> thank you, Bonnie. Whatever the little name is that comes up because I, I, you know, don't get that many. And it's really special that someone has taken the time to say, I'm going to buy this pattern and knit it. So... I got on a soapbox already this podcast how did that, that happen so quickly anyway I'll get off of it maybe I can edit that down to a much briefer little diatribe on knitwear design and six dollar patterns okay one of the things that I did over the holidays was watch a couple of videos on knitting and one of the ones that I purchased and watched was 50 tips from Shetland knitters by Hazel Tyndall and Elizabeth Johnston. It's really good. It's like three or more hours of the two of them starting from the beginning of knitting and going through everything that they can think of uh, for a tip. I really liked it. Um, you know, absolutely. Do I know how to do an SSK and uh, knit two together and know that the one, you know, has one um, 
leg of the knitting on top and the other goes the other way. I mean, some of the stuff was more basic, but they go through it fairly quickly and they're charming. You know, their accents are <laughs> absolutely really fun. Um, I have a note here that said that mine cost $24 and I used a coupon code called Shelty 20 and got $6 off. So it's originally a $30 um, video presentation. And I don't think I'm quite done with the whole thing. I think I have, you know, a bit left of it to watch. But I wanted to mention it because sometimes, you know, um, people ask me, how did you learn? How did you get to learn the things that you did about knitting? And, and I will tell you, I learned from a woman here in Minneapolis called Rosemary Cosell. She was my mentor for, oh my goodness, I'm going to say 15 years. Um, I was teaching high school English at the time. And on Thursday afternoons, uh, Rosemary would sit at the head of the table in the yarn shop from four to eight o'clock and you could bring your problems in and sit down next to her. And so every day after school at Thursdays, four o'clock, I would pick up some cookies and go down and sit next to Rosemary and visit with her. And some days the table would be full and other days it would be pretty empty. And I would just listen to what people asked of her and how she responded. And eventually after a while, People would sit down and I would think in my head, I know what she's going to say. She's going to tell them that they dropped a yarn over or she's going to tell them that the cable is twisted the wrong way or I could start to decipher what the problem was and come up with answers on my own just from sitting next to her and listening to her tell. She is just a vast, huge quantity of knowledge in her head. Um, she is an amazing finisher, um, a really good teacher. And I, I sat with her for years. Um, we really got to be good friends. And I mean, she would help me with my knitting too, but I think I learned more from others people, other people's knitting. And I often hear from people, I wish I had a knitting group. And, um, and so this is one of the ways that you can kind of learn some tips and tricks yourself to improve and better your knitting is to go out and watch some podcasts. Um, Another note that I have here today is to talk to you about my teaching schedule for 2019. I'm not going to be as busy this year. I've decided, well, number one, Ross, the husband, um, doesn't like me to be gone so much. He's really um, happy that I was super busy and that I was going on all these book talks and doing all this teaching and everything. But he said, you know, you were gone all the time. And I said, you're right. I have been gone all the time. Um, you know, the only time you see your husband when you're a stay-at-home designer is when he comes home from work, which for him is, you know, 6.30, 7 at night. Um, and then he's an early bird and I'm a late night person. And so he gets up and runs at 5 a.m. So he goes to bed early. And then on the weekends, we see each other. And I was gone and teaching on the weekends and at night. <laughs> so the only time I was home was during the day. So I wasn't feeling quite... Um, as away from home as he was. So I'm not, I'm not gonna do quite as much teaching this year. I'm gonna be a little more you know, selective in kind of what I do for teaching. But I am teaching at the Waconia Library and the Chanhassen Library in February and April respectively. Um, beginning Knitting, Beyond Beginning Knitting classes. So they're on their websites now and so you can go out and sign up for those if you're local. And then I am doing uh, my sweater workshop in uh, January, third weekend in January at Darn It Anyway in Stillwater. There's a morning and an afternoon session. I have not talked to her about whether or not those classes were full. Um, they were filling right before Christmas um, and she allows 20 to 25 people to come. So if you are again local in the metro area and um, want to take the sweater workshop because you've never done it, then that might be an option for you. Um, my website has all my teaching schedule. I'm in um, discussion right now with um, some ladies in Wisconsin to come over for the Three Rivers Knitting Guild and do a talk over there. Um, and again, if you have a local yarn store or a knitting guild and they're looking for teachers, Jen, get in touch with me. I, I, um, so next, let's talk about the bag tree. I took a picture for all of you of my tree. It's got a hat on it that I bought for $35 on Amazon. And I hang all my project bags on it in my office. And I brought it out today to talk about it. I love it because it has a lot of 
hooks on it one two three four five six seven eight like nine ten hooks on it and has a really heavy base so I would recommend buying a quality one over one that just has like a triangle tripod base because it might get a little tippy my bags tend to be pretty heavy because I have sweaters in them often and so I just hook them on right now currently going into 2019 I think I have 15 bags hanging on the tree so that means that I have finished uh, 15 unfinished objects hanging back here so and I know what they all are and some of them are designs that I need to work on and haven't had the time or the brain space or whatever and then some of them are projects that I just haven't finished and it keeps everything so I carry like two bags with me. I usually have two things on the needles at any given time and I bring those with me wherever I go or if I'm traveling. Uh, and then the rest of them hang on this tree. And I usually color coordinate um, bags with what's in them so I can kind of keep track. Uh, I kind of know better what's in it if I have a blue sweater and a blue bag. I, you, you have to have a lot of project bags to do that, <clears throat> which I do. Um, cause I, I've been knitting for so long, but I've been collecting for even longer. And so if I have a lot of orange bags, imagine that <laughs> I'm looking at the bottom here and all four bottom ones are orange. <laughs> but anyway, this is the name of the tree that of, I got, but it wasn't available right now. So here's the same tree, Walnut Hill tree coat rack, $41 and 75 cents. So you know a little pricey if if you're just gonna use it for um, hanging bags you might think well that's not an expense I need to have for me having bags laying everywhere was just driving me crazy and I didn't I couldn't ever find which bag I wanted because I try to tuck them away right under the end table next to the chair in the office under the desk in the closet it just it wasn't working for me so anyway I got I got it out and brought it over here for you today I've got Really cute ice cream sundae bag here. This is an Amy Beth bag. This is a silver shed bag. Uh, here's another Amy Beth bag. I've got a couple of silver shed bags down here. So anyway, um, and the dog. <laughs> He's laying partway underneath my chair and partly underneath the bag tree. If I lift this, will I make you all seasick? Am I so much clearer this podcast? Can you hear me so much better? Is the lighting amazing? Thank you to Ross for the new iPad Pro that I got for Christmas. Super surprised, had no idea. You know, sometimes those men listen when you complain. My, I, my old iPad was full all the time, full of, you know, all the stuff and I had to, had to delete so many things off it in order to record the podcast and then upload it each week and I would get so frustrated. I think he just got tired of me saying, the, my iPad is full and I have to download some, take some stuff off and I don't know where to put it. So anyway, got a new iPad Pro. So maybe, maybe it's looking amazingly different for all of you, this podcast. Um, maybe not, <laughs> we'll see. All right, let's talk about um, this week's shawl. We'll do that first. We're starting with the A's. <laughs> I started in alphabetical order. This is the Aced Light Shawl, A-E-S-T-L-I-G-H-T by Gudrun Johnson. And Aced Light has to do with East Light. Um, it is a Shetland construction, meaning that you make a interior U or V and then pick up and work around the outside of it. This is a small shawl. It's got a variegated and solid section that I think can, this can stand up to a variegated and a solid because this was knit in Malintosh single ply um, because this is garter. I know you, it's not super close for you, but I have a hard time wearing small shawls, keeping them on my shoulders, not knowing what to do with them all the time. Let me show you what I've done here. I've made an I cord. Actually, I made two I cords with my little I cord jiffy maker. So I have a solid one that matches and I have a variegated one. 
I did not make them super long. And then I just shoelaced in between the yarn overs there. See how that works? Just went in between the yarn overs and hooked it up. You can tie it once, you can tie it up high, you can tie it down low. You just go into the yarn over. So any shawl that you have that has uh, yarn overs along the edge, you can use a closure like this. It's not permanent. I can take it, you know, I can untie it, take it right out, move it up, move it down. But I have a tendency to just leave them in. Once I put that on, get it in a good spot for me, you can tie it in a bow, you can um, get it wrapped around your shoulders and it never falls off. I don't fuss with it all day. I don't have to deal with, you know, pulling it back up on my shoulder. It just stays on. I think that is probably the thing that most made shawls more wearable for me was figuring out ways to close them and wear them more, I guess you'd, you know, call it poncho style, right? There's a hole in the top and you put it on over your head. It settles in super easily, just like that. You just can put it on and then you just tie it up. I think I usually do it a little taller than what I had it on the mannequin. But you just tie it in a little bow, let it hang down, and it's just closed right there. So, tip and trick for closure number one, that's the Ace Light Shawl, Goodwin Johnson. It's an old pattern, but I really, I still think it has, if you've never, drunken mannequin. It's New Year's Eve. <laughs> she got tipsy already. <laughs> okay. We started off with a little crazy. That's where we're going to, that's where we're going to take it, right? What else would you expect out of New Year's Eve? Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk um, briefly about the question that we had last time that I said I would get to this time from SMD Wire or SM Dwyer, Sherry, S-M-D-W-I-R-E. And she asked me to talk a little bit about what fibers to use which, what, with what projects. And I did some thinking and some um, research. I, I just was out kind of looking online to see if there were some articles or things that would kind of address that and I didn't find too much. Mostly, I find that I'm happiest when I'm working with natural products like wool. Um, so, if a pattern calls for merino, cashmere, silk, MCS, merino, cashmere, silk blend, then I would pick a merino, cashmere, silk to knit it in. Because the designer has done the work for you to make the decision about what product is going to work best for that design. And she may have knitted up in, or he, um, may have knitted up in several iterations to get that, may have done quite a bit of swatching to make that decision. And so if it's knit in 100% wool and it's a sweater, then I choose 100% wool to knit it in. I, I rarely completely swap out the characteristics of what the design is made out of unless I've worked with that yarn before. So um, let's just um, say like a workhorse yarn like um, Cascade 220. I can use that for a lot of things that no one, you know, might call for because I've, I've knit with it a lot and it's, you know, it's just a workhorse yarn. It, it stays where you put it. <laughs> it doesn't doesn't really, you know, pull too far out of shape, holds its hold over time, it doesn't peel too badly. Um, I, I will say one of the few things um, that I almost always go away from is knitting with single ply. I'm just not a fan. Totally my opinion. Uh, if you knit a sweater with single ply yarn, it pills like the dickens. And you gotta glean that baby all the time. And the more you glean it, the more um, you know, structure you lose because you're actually taking pieces of the yarn off of it when it pills. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not a huge fan. And of shawl, um, probably the Ace Light um, from a while back was knit with a single ply yarn. I 
it's on the floor now, so I'm not going to pick it up. But uh, that I would say that I try to stick with what the pattern or designer has called for. Now, I also knit a lot with cotton, and we've discussed that at Infantum. So I, I will swap out cotton um, in the same weight of yarn, I, but I, I use good cotton. I think where people get into trouble sometimes, not always, is trying to go um, cheaper and use um, big box store yarn for a higher end accessory or sweater and then they're not as happy with the way it looks when it turns out. Um, I get it. It's, it's expensive to buy nice, really well dyed, really good yarn. It, it's expensive. So um, you can swap out some of those, but I always look at fiber content. Like what, what is in the yarn? Is it, you know, 80% wool and 20% nylon? A lot of those big box store yarns are like 50-50. If they have wool and cotton in them, they've got viscose or um, any other of the, you know, polyamide. Some of those words that you're not sure what they are, mostly those are just manufactured products that they're putting in there that are cheaper to make. And so I would probably stay away from those a little bit. I guess mostly I'm gonna say that I'm happiest when I'm, knit, that when I'm knitting with saturated colors for, that are my style in a, a yarn that meets the requirement of the pattern, if that makes sense. Um, if you have other specific questions about like, um, Corey, what would you think about using this for this? I would be willing to answer some of those from people uh, because I don't know how specific to get. You know, if, if, if a yarn, if, and I don't think you're talking about swapping out weights of yarn, because if you are, that's a whole nother discussion, you know, with gauge and row gauge and stitch gauge and um, swapping out, like say, I want to knit a worsted weight sweater in DK weight yarn or fingering yarn. Like, I don't think that's what you're talking about. You're talking about what type of fiber you can use for projects. I think most recently we've gotten really um, strong-minded about superwash wools, and they're they're getting a little of a hit from knitters right now about how stretchy they are, how bad they are for the environment, um, because the dye process is so harsh and there's so many chemicals. Um, so I think they're they're taking a hit right now, and we're going going to swing kind of toward more naturally dyed fibers or um, undyed fibers because sheep come in lots of colors neutral colors but lots of colors so that's you know easier to to buy and be happy with let's talk about the sweater of the week I'm going to insert a picture here So that you can see what it looks like um, on and then now I'm going to hold it up we're gonna do a little bit different than we did it last week but same concept how many of you would knit this sweater if you saw it in a yarn store just hanging on a hanger super boxy Three pieces, three rectangles, one big rectangle back and a rectangle for each front. No real shaping. Armhole is just bound off by a little bit here. And it rolls back. None of us took a second look at this when we went to our local yarn store. And when we saw it uh, tried on, on a body, we all decided that we really wanted to knit it. So I think there were six of us at the time who all picked different colors of this Sublime yarn. This is from the Sublime book number 39, and it is just an open fronted, but it is so soft and so cozy. You know, they often use boucle for babies. Um, it's such a soft yarn for a baby blanket. 
but a couple of companies make boucle now so this would be highly knittable today um white gum wool has a boucle and wool folk has a boucle yarn i think it's a lighter weight but you could hold it you know with a fingering or a lace weight and get this weight so the book is no longer in print but it's still available you can still find it um i looked on ravelry this afternoon and the, someone had the book for sale from their stash and since it's been discontinued I think I could probably make a copy um gosh I should, probably shouldn't say that I hate to make copies for everybody that <laughs> watches the podcast but you know you could probably hunt it down on eBay or actually even Etsy go out and see if you can't get a copy of it maybe the sublime website would have the pattern but the thing I love about it is that my knitting group is so eclectic that women that were younger than I was made it and women that were older and the way we styled it became the difference. So as you can see, I wear mine with a polka dot turtleneck underneath it. My friend Mary would maybe wear a silver collared blouse with black slacks. Uh, my friend Liz probably wore a long sleeved t-shirt under hers. So not only are you making a statement in the yarn color that you buy because you, you know, you choose something that appeals to you, but this came in like an olive green and I think a couple people picked that color. And so the thing that I think we all agreed on is that it looked pretty good on all body styles. You get a nice vertical open line up the front, which can make you look taller. Even though it's a bulky kind of oversized cardigan, you could certainly wrap it and belt it quite easily if you wanted to. This feels so good on the back of your neck. <laughs> if you work in an office or a building where you have cold air blowing on the back of your neck, this is a great sweater for you because it just really feels like a hug like you have almost a soft shawl over your shoulders and up on your neck yet it has this nice so I would recommend it for most people I usually um, don't have a lot of takers in my sweater class um, to try this on but I require that everyone come up and try <laughs> retry it on because it's a you know an oversized fit and every everybody sizes you know can anybody can try it on and I have more people say, I want to make this sweater now. This is super easy. It's stockinette, you know, three needle bind off at the shoulder seam. It is just not a difficult pattern to knit at all. I don't know if I would like it as well, um, going back to our question of the day, if it were knit up in a wool, because I think part of the, the beauty of it is almost like you have a blanket on or around your shoulders. I just really like it. I think it, it can, you know, kind of fit in a lot of different um, people's styles. And uh, I, yeah, it's just a good one. So Cheek Kimono by Sublime Yarns. Okay, I'm having a little discussion with Michelle of the Naughty Knitwits on Instagram this last week. <laughs> when she asked about whether or not people wind up their mini skeins before they knit them into whatever blanket or project that they're doing them. And I answered, no, I put it around my neck and I knit off that from my, around my neck and it's not difficult and I don't want to take the time. I'm all about efficiency. You guys know I'm all about fast and furious getting it done. And so <clears throat> Michelle commented that she, she'd probably hang herself or choke herself from um, having the yarn around her neck. So I thought I would just show everybody how I do it and maybe we can discuss you know other ways of having your um, yarn work so let's just say that you're gonna knit off your onto your mini skein or blanket or a sock or whatever so I just twist it as I knit and I just pull it off like this and as I as I knit and it just goes around like this sometimes I'll take the yarn and bring it up around my neck like this and then knit some more and then bring it up around my neck like this it goes so quickly. I'm doing the mitered square blanket um, with the little squares. Uh, I think I cast on 37 stitches, so they're really small. I should probably get that out and show it to you. This is my mitered square blanket. It's about, I don't know, 24, well, not quite, maybe 16 inches tall, but it's quite long. 
Who's not in that? Um, so I'm not knitting for very long. I think I, I need de definitely less than 10 grams. And so I can knit that up in about, I think 35 minutes is what it takes me to do a square. And it's not worth it to me to knit this, to wind this into a ball and then turn around and knit it off and then just have a little ball left. So I just knit right off of this. Now this week I saw that Michelle found a bag that was this size or the size of the skein that she was, that she wrapped it around and she was just knitting off of that. And that works too. Um, someone said that they wrapped it around a lamp and then the lamp turned so it worked like a swift, which is brilliant, right? I just love how we can learn things from knitters. But this is the way I've been knitting onto my mitered score blanket all these years and it has worked well for me and so I just thought, well, I may as well sh share it on the podcast as something that maybe you're winding all of your mini skeins into balls. The 20 gram ones take a little time actually to wind up so it's just not a value to me to to wind them into the balls. So there's your tip for the day. Story stories. Some of my friends know this um, happened to me the other day, but I was on the phone with Apple on Friday for about an hour and a half. And we were reloading and starting over and reloading and try to set, trying to set up an Apple Watch. And I was just chatting with the young man who was on the phone with me and I said, you know, we were getting a a bunch of rain and then it turned to ice and he said oh are you probably getting what we had yesterday in Oklahoma and um, then he was telling me how he was taking care of his mother's dog and he had heard my dog panting <laughs> next to the phone because I had him on speaker and I had the phone on the desk and Cody came in and was <laughs> so uh, he said oh do you have a furry friend there and I said yes that's my 75 pound chocolate labradoodle and he said, oh, I'm watching my mother's dog right now. It's, um, I was taking a shower yesterday and I heard the dog crying. And he said, so I hopped out of the shower and ran out to the other room and the dog had broken its leg. And it was like twisted around backwards. And so he said, I got dressed and took the dog into the vet and it cost $66 at the vet for them to even see the dog. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's you know, really sad. So it's a tiny dog, little chihuahua, like six pounds, something like that. And um, they came out and said that it was going to be two, 230 some dollars to fix the dog's leg. And he didn't have the money. So they gave him the dog and sent him back home. Now, I've only been on the phone with this gentleman for, you know, a period of time. So I don't know him. And I want to send him the money. Right? I'm like, I, I'm going to come up with the $230 and I'm going to figure out how to send this man the money so he can get that dog's leg fixed because I'm such a dog person and it makes me so sad. And when he had introduced himself, he had said, hi, my name is Johnny. So I knew he was Johnny in Oklahoma. But then I start thinking, and this is the whole premise of the story today, is what if it's a scam? Right? Why do we have to go there? But we do, right? So I'm thinking, gosh, what if this man is on the phone with poor pet owners every day and is getting money out of people somehow? So I'm thinking, what am I going to do? How can I offer to pay for this, I, you know, without getting myself in trouble with my husband? <laughs> um, so I'm trying to text my friends, but I'm on my phone. So I got on my iPad and texted my friend Amber and said, call me on my home phone. <laughs> I need to talk to you because I was still on the phone with this. He's still trying to fix my, he's going to the management. They're trying to figure out what to do with this watch. <laughs> and, um, and Amber's taking her son to the orthodontist. So she, she doesn't get back to me. And so eventually I just hang up and I can't stop thinking about it. I'm just, I'm, and then the brilliant idea comes to me that I could have had the vet's office call me and I could have given the money to the vet's office, right? I could have done a visa to the vet's office, but I've hung up and I can't find Johnny in Oklahoma from the Apple support network. We ended up going into the Apple store and there was a four and a half to five hour wait for people trying to get 
help. The next available appointment in the Apple Store was next Wednesday. It was a disaster. I mean, and so they're all too busy to deal with Johnny. And he said that he would have the money when he got paid. And I just can't stop thinking about that poor little dog and whether or not it really did break its leg. And then my friend said, you know, what did the dog just spontaneously break its leg when it was running around the house? I mean, like what happened? And then I'm thinking too, what if, what if he broke the dog's leg? Like did something to, I, you know, like, oh, it was just the worst. <laughs> I, I didn't know what to think or what to say or what to do. So I'm just sharing it as a story today. There's no happy ending feels kind of flat now that I'm telling it. It feels sad and not not a great way to start the new year, but I, I just felt like so easy these days to care for one another with reservation, right? Because you don't know what you're getting into. So I guess we just want to leave it today with what Ellen DeGeneres says every time she ends a show, which I think is so nice, is be kind to one another, and maybe we won't have to have reservations about people's ulterior motives forever. I'm going to sign off now. Just remember that going into the new year to keep it colorful.